Alright guys, how's it going? It's Miles from Nachi Cheese TV and this is going to be a tutorial on how to print across multiple pieces of paper so you can print larger stencils. So let's open up Photoshop and right here I have all the layers for this stencil um, already uh, <coughs> already separated. So one tip that I want to share with you guys is instead of individually coloring your layers like I taught you guys in the multi-layered stencil tutorial if you haven't seen that you need to go watch that cause or that's if you don't know how to make a stencil already you need to go watch that <laughs> okay so here's my layers um, one thing you can do to make it instead of having to individually select all of it and then color it in like you learned in the multi-layered tutorial, multi stencil tutorial um, you can just double click the layer and it'll bring up your blending options. Once you have blending options open, go to color overlay, select that box. Instead of red, we'll use 50, about a 50% 50 gray. Because gray saves ink rather than using black. So now that we have that on this layer, let's put it on the rest. So what you want to do is hold down Alt. And then just drag it onto each layer that you want it on. So now you can see each layer is gray. So we're good. Now, what we're going to want to make is this. These are my alignment rings. How to make them is make a new layer. Like you see right here, this little box in a box makes a new layer. Make a new layer. Get your circle ring tool whatever this thing is right here and hold down shift and make like a ring in the middle of your paper or your middle of your canvas um, and what you want to do is right click it hit stroke it's on three pixels for width and it's black so that's good click OK then you want to click your magic wand tool over here and click outside of the canvas area and then it'll um, stop the rotating dot things the selection so now right click this duplicate it okay hit control T that brings up your transform box hold down shift while you do this you want to drag this box to this edge and this box to this edge so drag it onto the edge of that other circle and what it does is it makes a perfectly centered circle inside this circle now we're going to do that same thing one more time. Duplicate layer. We're going to control T. Hold down shift. Drag it in. Drag it in. There you go. And then you just right click and merge down. Right click, merge down. And there you go. You want to be, that's a little too high. I want this in like the middle of my paper. See, so like right there. That would be ideal. You can see I already have one though, so I don't need this. And this one isn't even in the middle that much. There you go. So let's move on. Now we're gonna print out our first layer. So layer one, as you can see right here, let's make it visible. Go to File, Print, or hit Control P. Okay. Now what we want to do is have scale to fit media selected and bounding box selected I guess don't matter um, more importantly you want to go into your print settings okay now we are in our print settings which one do is under main uh, I like to keep it on text you could use photo but it takes a lot longer to print and since it doesn't really matter how good it looks because you're cutting it out anyways you might as well just go with the faster one which is text um, let's see this is your landscape and portrait options so select whichever one is appropriate for your specific painting now let's go to page layout under page layout when you get here this is not going to be selected so you want to select multi-page what's going to happen is it's going to have pages per sheet two per sheet you don't want multiple images on one piece of paper you want one image on multiple pieces of paper so uh... you want to select poster printing and right away it gives us two by two as you can see four pieces of paper or you could go all the way up to three by three 
or 4x4. Four four. I don't use either one of those. I use 2x1 and 2x2. Two 2x1 two. Two is nearly perfect for a 14 by 11 inch canvas. 2x2 two two is nearly perfect for a 16 by 20 inch canvas. So now you want to go to Borders, Settings, Print Cutting Guides because you have to trim these so you can glue them together and make that perfect large piece of paper and you want to be on overlapping alignment marks click OK you're all good here let's hit O. OK so now we're gonna print it out so go ahead and click your print alright so here's another tip when you go to print out your every layer pretty much except your first layer what I like to do is go ahead select the layer that you already printed go to opacity right up here it's above fill and turn that down to 20 percent that makes a very transparent um, image and what you want to do is click your next layer that's coming up to print and then go ahead file and print all your settings that you already have uh, selected will still be on there and they'll stay on there for this project as long as you ever have this project if it's uh, if you save the PSD for this which is a Photoshop document um, it's a file type it'll always save this the print settings too so yeah and then you also do the same exact thing for the next following layer and then next layer and you just keep doing that so pretty much you have the previous layer before the layer that you're printing ghosted behind um, this layer and then by the time you're done everything is going to be in 20 percent opacity except your last layer which is layer 5 for me so then you want to turn all your layers on at least I like to turn all my layers on and then when I go to print my island layer I'll leave that in black and then I have every other single layer um, really transparent in the background and then go ahead and file print this out alright guys so at this point you have all your stencils already printed out you're gonna have a nice pretty hefty stack of paper if you did as many as I did because I did uh, five layers plus one island layer so six layers and then two by two so six by four which is what 24 24 pieces of paper I like to separate the paper each layer I do this and identify lay it out so you know basically what it's gonna be alright and then what I like to do is take a sharpie and then I mark each piece of paper with which number it is pretty much think of it like quadrants in um in geometry you have the XY graphs so this is your first quadrant second third fourth so I put one two three four and so now I'm going to do that to every other layer and then I'm going to show you how to cut it out okay just remember it's really important that you number these the same way I'm doing it or else if you number this one number one and then two three four then you're going to mix up with the way how you cut it out and it's not going to line up correctly it's not going to work at all actually so remember this is one this is two this is three and this is four All right? and I put lines under them because sometimes when the paper's upside down a two looks like a what do you call it it looks like a two either way and ones I make at a point to make them like the yeah you understand I make the one so I can tell it's a one which direction it is put a line underneath it so you know which is the bottom in case you get confused okay so this is the order or the way that you have to trim these lines so they can be aligned right or trim these little borders now remember you have to get this right <laughs> because if you cut it you cut the wrong border part off then it's not going to line up right so for number one number one you want to cut off the left and the bottom okay it doesn't matter if it's landscape or portrait for number one you want to cut off the left and the bottom. For number two, you want to cut off just the bottom. All right? For number three, you cut off nothing. For number four, cut off just the left. Okay? 
So basically, the pattern that you see within this is on the bottom, you just cut off this end right here so these fit together, right? On the top, what you see is you cut off just this so these two fit together, and you cut off the bottom on both so it fits together on there, right? So hopefully that makes sense. I use a paper cutter, this guy right here. If you have one of these things, great. If you don't, use a ruler and your exacto knife. You should have an exacto knife if you're cutting that stencils, right? If you don't, I don't know what to tell you. You should have an exacto knife. Um, so, the, what you're going to be cutting is C. I'm supposed to cut off this left. I'm supposed to cut off the bottom because this is number one. If you look at the corners, you'll see these little rectangles. And there's on every single corner. Yeah. Okay, so. Since I'm cutting off this side right here, I line up the rectangles right here, that top line of this one, and this top line of this one, and you cut those off. I'm going to draw little arrows at them so you know exactly what I'm talking about. There, and there. And you want to cut as perfectly as you can across that line because these lines right here line up perfectly with the edge of this. You want to cut it perfectly across. That's why you use a ruler or this. You want it to be pretty much perfect. You can use scissors probably because if it's not perfect, it'll still work. But try your best to get as perfect as you can. Okay, so now you can see that I cut off that first little border on number one on the first quadrant of this large stencil and so this is how you cut it as you can see is right to the edge come on it's right to the very edge of the um of the of that little rectangle right there and right there so that's perfect here's where it gets a little tricky on the first quadrant you now have to cut off from uh, the top of this rectangle going this direction because you have to cut off the bottom too so you need to cut off that guy right there or right at that line and unfortunately on this side there is no rectangle pointing in that direction because you cut it off already so you have to do your best with just lining up this and I guess you could use this if you have a nice long line these three lines right here from those alignment rings also come in handy to use it to line up. So that's another way these alignment rings come in handy. Okay, so here we see how I cut off those two edges. And now we have this. And it has a clean, oops, has a clean bottom. And it has a clean left side. So let's do the rest the rest are all easier this one's the hardest because it only has because once you cut off that one border you have to cut off the other one with only using that one alignment rectangle so um, I'm gonna do the rest of these and then I'm gonna show you how to glue them together so what we have to do now is all these exposed gray parts we have to cut out the rectangles so if it's a, a line that you cut the rectangles that fall on that line that you cut you have to cut the rectangles out. Okay, so now I cut out the little rectangles on all the exposed sides. For number two, you really don't need to cut this one out, but I mean, I'm just going to do it anyways for the video's sake. And then there. Hopefully now you guys are kind of understanding why I put these alignment marks in. It will make everything so much easier to line these up. These two bombs together, three and four, I always start with three and four. I just put a scrap piece of paper down so I don't get glue on my cutting mat. And so what you want to do is put your glue on here where this is about to line up. And then line up the cutouts with the rectangles. And you really want to try getting this as perfect as you really possibly can because that first quadrant that's going to be on the top um, top right it um, 
it can be hard to line up and sometimes you can't line it up if you don't do all the other lining lining up perfectly correct so you want to get this as correct as you can and here yeah, we have just the bottom portion or the bottom half of this stencil already right, good now for the second for the second quadrant uh, where is the number two on there? There it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the glue pretty much on just this third layer over here. Get my number two layer. Line these up. And then you pretty much just line up your alignment layer, your alignment marks or alignment rings, whatever I called them, and. Um, there. Now, that looks a little bit off. Like I said, I'm trying to get it as perfect as I can because it'll make lining up that very last quadrant a lot easier. And you'll see I'll probably actually struggle lining that one up because that one is always, I mean, I'm telling you, it has to be perfect for that one to just fit in there perfectly. Kind of have to play with it a little bit. So let's do this one now. All right, guys. So it's a little bit later. I had to charge my camera battery for a while. And so I just ate dinner and did some stuff. So let's finish this. For putting the number one quadrant on, um, I've always kind of struggled with this, but I was looking at this like as the best way I can explain it, since I don't want you guys to have to struggle too. And this seems pretty, pretty good way of doing it. It's where you line up your top rectangle best you can, then line up your bottom rectangle, and they're probably not gonna line up. And honestly, when I line up both of these, they don't. So what you want to do is you kind of want to start moving it around so you get them both as much as you can in the rectangle. And that's almost perfect. Yeah, so that's pretty close to perfect. And then let's check everything else. Oh, my alignment marks are way off on here, so I'm going to make sure my alignment marks are... You just want, between your rectangles and your alignment marks, you want as little tolerance as possible as you can possibly get. So if everything line, the best you can get to line up, that's good enough. Because it's not going to be perfect because you'd have to be a machine to be able to cut all this just straight perfect. So let's see, that's looking best I can do. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down, you know, actually I'm not going to hold these down. I'm going to weigh this down. By the way, I'm in, the, I'm in my garage right now. Um, I just set up this workshop area for knife making. So I'll do a video on my whole setup. But it's got good lighting out here, so I should actually start filming more videos. So lift this, set it down. There you go. Now that's secure in there. And glue the rest of it. Can. So there we go. Here's this layer. Perfectly done. Not perfectly, but it's done. Let's end this video because it's a little too long, like all my tutorials, but I know you guys have learned something from this. And I know this is helpful for a lot of you guys. And, um, yeah, just the last thing I'd like to get in is on, if you're printing across two by one, it's really self-explanatory. You just cut out the rectangles on one of the pieces of paper, and then, uh, I mean, you cut the edge off one piece of paper, and then cut the rectangles out and just line it up with the other. Since it's only two pieces of paper, it's really easy, and you don't need the alignment marks, just line up the two rectangles. 
And so, yeah. More tutorials to come. More quick tips to come. More paintings to come. So, see you guys later. Peace.